beautiful, willowy, and warm. And for ten minutes, she'd been looking at me like we were in and they were out, whoever they are. So I thought I'd better play it cool and cut. Why don't you sit down? Where's your boyfriend? At the bar. He asked me after his place for jazz and records. But I thought I'd like it better. What do you say, uh, live from New York? You're high, honey. Aren't you? No, I'm not. Why don't you get high with me? Uh, I'd like to. Thank you, but no thank you. What's your name? John Staccato. John Staccato. Don't you want to know my name? Well, I... What's your name, sonny boy? I just told Mother, Dad. My name's Guy Fletcher, and that's my girl. Stand up, kitty, so I can bust in your greasy little nose. N-O-S-E. You want to fight? Yeah. Okay. Let's go outside. Come on, baby, watch me take this guy. For some reason, Guy Fletcher became a big buddy after it was over. Some guys are like that. It's pretty strange when a guy comes on big after you've just smacked him in the mouth. Hello, look, honey, go part of your nose, huh? I got a job for you. Pays a thousand dollars in cash in advance. Strictly legitimate. This would seem to be my night. Are you interested? Uh, uh, I, I hardly have been introduced to you and you're offering me a thousand dollars. Tell you what, you think it over, if you're interested. Be in my office, 3.15 tomorrow afternoon. The end of another typical evening. So, the beginning of another typical day. Park Avenue looks great at 3 p.m. Lots of people are just returning from lunch. Better late than never. And so many pretty girls, they flock here from everywhere. I'm a native, the real McCoy, but I still ask directions. Not because I don't know where to go, either. I decided to look into the $1,000 offer. I simply want you to take these minerals and reports to Los Angeles. Don't tell anybody what you're doing or where you're going. Keep it a secret, huh? Yeah, that's about all there is to it. What do you want to give me $1,000 for? Why don't you just hire a special messenger? Well, this is a very special shipment. You see, we've tied up some extensive mineral rights in four South American countries. It's worth millions. Now, these samples are the evidence or the proof to a financial backer, the financial backer you'll be taking them to. Why don't you take them yourself? Because it's dangerous. You see, there's another bunch chasing the same rainbow, and they do just about anything to get their hands on it. Now, if there's any trouble, you can take care of yourself, Mr. Staccato. Frankly, I want to get this out of my hands. I'm a little nervous. The transport of these samples might be a risky business. $1,000, huh? A thousand dollars in expenses. All right. It's a deal. When do I leave? Tonight. 
Miss Chambers, give Mr. Staccato the envelope I left with you. My secretary will give you your ticket. You come on back in here and get the case and the money. Detailed instructions on an envelope on the inside. I don't want you to open it until you're an hour from Los Angeles. Around Arizona, right? Well, the trip takes about ten hours. You open it when you're nine hours out of here. Here you are, $1,000 in cash. You can count it if you like. Oh, uh... If there are any problems, I'll call you. Bye. Bye. Oh, Mr. Scotto. Be careful, huh? Hello, Max. Yeah, I finally found the pigeon. It was 8 o'clock when I arrived at Idlewild and checked in. It was an unscheduled plane, and it was delayed for some reason, so I killed an hour having coffee, then I got on board. Good evening. Good evening. I'm sorry, sir, you're blocking the aisle. Oh, I'm sorry. Had a little trouble with that number two motor. Really? Oh, yeah. They've been working on it for an hour. That's what's holding us up, you know. Really loaded, huh? Oh, yeah. I like to sit next to the emergency door, just in case. <laughs> Fasten your seat belts, please. You smell something burning? Nope. Must be them battery chargers there. Those on. <laughs> hope they didn't forget to cap the gas tanks. Man, I hope not. Oh, fasten your seatbelt, please. Looks closed from here. Well, one of them is okay. Is this your first flight? Oh, no. I fly all the time. Is this yours, sir? Oh, that's right. What have you got in here, rocks? That's right. You'll have to keep it on the floor during takeoff. Might fall and hurt somebody. You got a loose lock there. I know. <laughs> Everybody's got a little tan box. <laughs> BM. Victor Morris, that's me. Plastics. You're a musician, aren't you? Now, how did you know that? Oh, I know all about music. It's my avocation, popular music. But I turned pro. <laughs> I write it. Sure, I can tell by your lip. You play trumpet, don't you? Nope. What then? More like a trombone. Sure. <laughs> I could tell by your lip. <laughs> you had me pegged all right, OK. <laughs> Bye, bye, Manhattan. 
There's a storm between here and KC. I hope it isn't too bad. Oh, put this up there, will you? Excuse me. Well, we can relax now. Better be vigilant, Mr. Morris. No telling what can happen between here and Los Angeles. Isn't that the truth? More of a nursery thing. You know, like a kid's music box. Cute. <laughs> so I've got Grandpa Rocks, Daddy Rocks, Mother Rocks, Sister Child Rocks, and Baby Rocks. Gonna call the album Rock of All Ages. <laughs> Rock of All Ages, that's... Would you like to see the music? No, no, I, uh, I can't read. You just tell me all about it, right? Miss? I just might doze off, so uh, could you wake me up when we get over Arizona, please? Of course. Thank you. Funny, the exhaust flame's still blue. I'm working on something else now called Teenage Mother, You're Mine. <laughs> so I got the whole series working. Rock of all ages, like I said. Tinkle, tinkle, tinkle. Voom ja, voom ja, Mr. Morse. What is it? Motor conk out? Supercharger time. You know that whole bit, don't you, Mr. Morse? What happened? Yeah, yeah. What? What's happened? They had to change the prop pitch. It's supercharger time. What? I'm delighted you turned to me in your moment of fear. What did you say about the props? Mr. Morse? They have to cut in the superchargers at 13,000 feet so they can climb to 19,000 feet. Isn't that right, Mr. Morse? Uh, then they throttle back and they adjust the props. You can always hear the change. We'll be climbing now. See? See. Were you asleep? Sort of. No, not really. I... I'm a little nervous. Is that seat next to you vacant? Yes. Goodbye, Mr. Morrison. Smoke? Thank you. How do you know all that? Oh, my head's full of bits of odd information I picked up here and there. You know, it's embarrassing. I've been wanting to spend the time of night with you ever, ever since we left. It took a supercharger to bring us together. Kismet. It was meant to be. What's your name? Nina. Van Ness. Nina Van Ness, the singer. Don't tell me you remember me. Yeah, you, you, were, um, you were at the round table three years ago, right? I'm Johnny Staccato. I know. You play jazz. Oh, sort of. I bet we have a lot of mutual friends. How bad. So let's not talk about them. Are you uh, going out to work? Um, no, not exactly. First stop is Encino to pay my respects to my parents and... Then I'm going to Las Vegas to get a divorce. Oh, let's not talk about my troubles either. Tell me some more about how airplanes fly or sing me a lullaby. I need a rest. Well, I could give you a rundown on the rock of all ages. My ex-traveling companion. He's a rock and roll writer, you <laughs> know. Look, he, he just turned on the light. Would you excuse me? Where are you going? I just found you. I have to brush my teeth. Oh, sure.
How you doing, Mr. Morris? Oh, I can't sleep. I'll do a little work. I, I got some music paper here. Sit down. Uh, not right now. getting a little turbulent. What are you going to do, jump? Yeah, without a parachute. Oh, I want some coffee. Miss? No, no, it's too early for coffee. Let's go back to sleep. Miss? Yes? Is there any chance for coffee? Yes, I'll get you some. Oh, Miss. How far from Los Angeles are we now? About an hour and a half. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Where are you going now? Then I get my briefcase. <clears throat> I won't eat breakfast without you. And vice versa. <laughs> Is Mr. Staccato coming back? Oh, yes. Here, I'll take his coffee. Wow. Thank you. Ew, not very hot coffee. Yeah. Oh, uh, before I forget, I'd like to get your Los Angeles phone number. I'll be in Encino. Well, you will have a phone there, won't you? You mean you drive all the way out to the valley to see me? I'll call first. I'll get road conditions, okay? All right. If you really mean it, give me something to ride on. Uh, right on. Uh, here. working for my husband. For your husband? What are you talking about? Guy Fletcher, consulting engineer. Guy Fletcher? He's your husband, the man you're going to divorce? Oh, my, how surprised. Do you know you're really very convincing? He couldn't have gotten a better boy. Nina. What are you supposed to do, make new evidence or, or kill me or just lean on what me What are you talking bit? about? He's already put me in the hospital. In the hospital? You? That's right. Nina, I didn't know you were his Look, wife. Look, are you working you for him or aren't you? Well, yeah, I'm working for him, but, but I had I don't want to talk you. to you. Would Not you? one word. Now, would you just leave quietly, please? Sometimes your head works for you without you even knowing it. Once you get the signal, you have to stop and ask yourself, what am I trying to tell me? Right now, I got a flash of goose pimples across my back. There had been two things connected with Guy Fletcher on the plane. Now there were three. Me, the little case, and now Nina. And I got scared. Don't touch me. I've got to talk to Look, you. Look, you stay away I from don't me. Don't be stubborn. I have to talk you to you. You stay away from me. Nina, I have to talk I to you. Just leave me Will alone, you sit please. Down? I'm not going to beat you up in front of 60 people. Excuse me. Sit down. I just sit down. Nina. Nina. Fletcher sent me on this particular flight at this particular time on a business deal. Now, as it turns out, his estranged wife is on the same plane at the same time. You're right, it sounds very peculiar. Now, I was supposed to open this case when we reached Arizona, which is now. There's supposed to be rocks inside, which I saw. 
Now, would it be possible for him to want to kill you? I mean, would he do a thing like that? He really hates me. I don't think there's anything he wouldn't do. I ought to know what's in here, but now I'm not sure. I'm afraid to open it. I'm afraid not to open it. I can't take the chance. I'm going to get the pilot to bring this plane down. He won't do it. He'd better. Specialist is here. Watch this one. Brother, I don't know whether I hope you're right or wrong. Either way, I'm glad I'm not in your shoes. Yeah. Nina, get out of here, will you? I don't want you on this plane. Why, I'm in this with you. Now, what's this all about? And give it to me fast. Well, he claims he's got a bomb in there. I, I don't claim. I'm just afraid there is... Are you a bomb expert? Not an expert, just a journeyman. I'm Sam Jones. You ain't sure there's a bomb in that case? No, sir, I am not sure, but I thought that somebody better make sure. Well, mister, there better be. Or you're gonna have a lot of questions answered to us in the CAA. We'll have a look. Mike, Dexter, take him over to the coffee shop and get him to buy you a drink. We're gonna be about an hour. I just don't understand, Johnny. You saw this stuff in the case. Well, I stepped out of the room for about 10 seconds. He must have switched it on me. That, uh, there comes Big Daddy. Who are you, buddy? John Staccato. I'm uh, from New York. You know what was in that case? Rocks? 12 one-pound blocks of TNT with a little trigger device and a percussion cap. If you'd opened that lid, chikoom. Was that case yours? No, sir, it was not. Well, then where did you get it? I got it from her husband. You running away with her? No, sir, I am not. Well, then, supposing you tell me everything you can so we can have her hubby picked up for attempted homicide. Better make that genocide. There were 60 people on that plane. Now, what's your husband's name, ma'am? Hey, excuse me, I just want to see if I can do something about that. Teenage mother, you're mine. Teenage mother, you're mine. Teenage mother, oh, you're mine, you're mine, you're mine, you're mine. Teenage mother, be kind. Teenage mother, please be kind. Teenage mother, please be kind to me, to me, to me. Teenage mother, be kind. Teenage mother, please be kind to me, to me, to me. 